Once upon a time in the ancient lands, there existed a mysterious and often overlooked connection between two mighty civilizations, the Parthians and the Scythians. While the pages of history may not be adorned with extensive tales of their relationship, the Parthians and Scythians shared not only common origins, but also forged alliances that transcended the boundaries of military cooperation. Picture a world where nomadic tribes, living a life of horseback riding, herding, and dwelling in covered wagons, roamed the vast expanses of Central Asia. These were the Scythians, their ascendancy spanning from the 7th to the 3rd century BCE, stretching from the Black Sea to the Caspian Sea, and reaching as far as the Altai Mountains of Mongolia. Yet, around 330 BCE, a shift occurred, and the Parthians, known as the Parna and Scythians themselves, began their rise. Migrating south off the steppe, east of the Caspian Sea, they entered the Seleucid province of Parthia, employing Scythian military tactics to conquer Parthia and eventually the Seleucid Empire, earning the name Parthians. Amidst this dynamic backdrop, military alliances, conflicts, and influences shaped the intertwined fate of Parthia and Scythia. Cultural ties and geographical proximity naturally led to cooperation in the realm of warfare. Even in times of conflict, the two civilizations found themselves entwined. An instance arose when the Parthians sought Scythian support to secure Syria from the Seleucid ruler Antiochus VII. However, impatience prevailed, and the Parthians emerged victorious without the Scythians. This led to a dispute over payment, triggering a Scythian revolt that claimed the life of Parthia's king, Phreates II. The Wheel of Fortune continued to turn as Scythian tribes in the east, emboldened by previous victories, played a pivotal role in the demise of Artabanus I. Yet, the intricate dance of alliances and conflicts persisted, with the Scythians later aiding Parthia in times of dynastic trouble, securing the throne for King Sinatrusis I. As the nadir of Scythia coincided with the ascent of Parthia, valuable lessons were exchanged between the two civilizations. The Scythians, once revered for their invincibility in battle, employed a diverse array of weapons and tactics. Battle axes, maces, lances, swords, shields, scale armor, and helmets, their arsenal was vast. Their strategy involved a blend of infantry and formidable cavalry, luring enemies deep into friendly territory before ambushing them with their unparalleled skill in archery on horseback. However, the tides turned for the Scythians after their defeat by Philip II and a fatal trap set by Alexander the Great. As their reputation waned, the Parthians, whether as combatants or allies, gleaned profound insights from the successes and failures of their Scythian counterparts. As the time continued to turn, the Parthians found themselves at the crossroads of learning from the triumphs and pitfalls of Scythian warfare. Drawing inspiration from the Scythian tactics that once struck fear into the heart of mighty Darius, the Parthians scripted their own chapter of glory at the Battle of Carrhae in 53 BCE, where they successfully vanquished the Romans using the same strategies. In the realm of military strategy, the Parthians simplified the Scythian approach, relying less on infantry and more on the prowess of their cavalry. They honed their use of short and long swords, lances, and bows, discarding the intricate variety of arms favored by the Scythians. Building on the strength of the Scythian nimble horses and expert bowmanship, the Parthians made crucial improvements, breeding better horses and enhancing the design of their bows. Access to the pastures and breeding techniques of media, acquired in the 2nd century BCE, played a pivotal role in this evolution. One of the Parthians' most groundbreaking innovations was the development of the cataphract, a mounted warrior equipped with a lance and a long sword, riding a heavily armored horse. This integrated tactical use of fully armored cavalry, working in tandem with their light cavalry, proved to be a game-changer on the battlefield. The cataphracts, with their weight and momentum, created openings in enemy lines that the light cavalry exploited by showering arrows upon the disarrayed foe. In addition to military prowess, governance played a crucial role in the success of both the Parthians and the Scythians. Communal organization within the military was a silent force behind their achievements. A golden beaker from the 4th century BCE depicted scenes of bivouac soldiers, engaged in rituals and activities fostering camaraderie. The Parthians took this concept further, establishing a broader sense of shared purpose and loyalty among soldiers. While Scythian loyalty centered around tribes and chieftains, Parthian nobles pledged allegiance to one king. The nobles, acting as a counterbalance to potential tyranny, held significant influence and could depose a king deemed irresponsible or power-hungry. In terms of governance, Scythia operated more as a confederation of tribes and chiefs, as described by Herodotus. Though there were high kings or chiefs, 
the governance was decentralized, with subchiefs holding sway in decision-making. The Parthians, on the other hand, embraced a more centralized rule. While local governors and client kings enjoyed a degree of autonomy, a single ruling class governed Parthia. The goal was clear, to maintain political cohesion and unity under the banner of one king, supported by the noble class. And, as the Parthians ventured beyond the nomadic realms of the Scythians, they found themselves immersed in a world of architectural wonders, a stark departure from the mobile lifestyle of their Scythian forebears. While the Scythians were often perceived as wholly nomadic, historical accounts reveal a more nuanced reality. Herodotus, the ancient historian, spoke of two other types of Scythians, the royal and the farming kind. The farming Scythians, more than mere subsistence cultivators, engaged in cooperative efforts, building permanent homes and settlements. Herodotus alluded to a vast land north of the Black Sea, where farmers cultivated a territory three days journey wide and eleven days voyage long, hinting at the scale of their agricultural endeavors. Architecturally, the logistics of such farming communities would necessitate the construction of storage warehouses and roads to facilitate trade. The royal Scythians, as evidenced by the grandeur of their burial mounds or kurgons, displayed a more settled lifestyle, residing in fortified settlements like the Belsk fortification in the Dnieper River Valley. This stronghold, with its colossal earthwork spanning 33 kilometers in circumference, stood not just as a military outpost but also as a center of crafts, wealth, and extensive trade. Yet, despite these signs of permanency, the Scythians remained predominantly nomadic, with houses on wheels that, when gathered, resembled a mobile city. The Parthians, stepping into the realms of settled societies like the Greeks and Persians, encountered a landscape rich with architectural marvels. To establish their dominance over empires boasting great wealth and infrastructure, the Parthians undertook ambitious architectural projects. At Tessaphon near Seleucia on the Tigris, they constructed housing for their troops capable of accommodating a vast multitude. Public buildings promoting arts, crafts, and commerce adorned the city, with a winter residence for the king and the fortified city of Ekbatana for the summer. In Hatra, the Parthians erected a three-mile fortified wall that thwarted the Roman Emperor Trajan's attempts in 117 CE and Septimius Severus in 193 and 197 CE. Within the city, a colossal temple, measuring 800 feet in length and 700 feet in width, stood as a testament to Parthian architectural prowess. Similar feats were achieved in Merv, with state-of-the-art fortifications and step-shaped battlements. In Syria, the Parthians established Dura Europas as a provincial administrative center, complete with fortified walls, a palace, a mithraeum, a bazaar, and a Jewish synagogue, showcasing their multicultural inclinations. The Parthians breathed new life into ancient cities like Asur, Uruk, and Nimrud, enhancing them with fabulous houses and temples featuring barrel vaulting. The Parthian architectural innovation of vaulted open-ended entryways, known as awans, left an indelible mark on Middle Eastern design. The walls of Asur, adorned with beautifully crafted tooled stucco, foreshadowed patterns later adopted by Muslim artists, underscoring the enduring legacy of Parthian architectural influence. Delving into the cultural tapestry of the Scythians, we unearth a wealth of insights from the recent discoveries in the Kurgans north of the Black Sea. While ancient sources often spotlight their nomadic and warlike nature, the burial goods unearthed offer a glimpse into the profound cultural sophistication and vibrant social life of the Scythians. Gold, the glittering canvas of their craftsmanship, unveils not just artifacts but vivid life stories. A simple comb transforms into a visual narrative, depicting warriors locked in fierce combat. The Tolstaya Modula Kurgan yields a pectoral or gorget a canvas of daily life intricately detailed. Scenes unfold, the milking of a ewe, men sewing a shirt, and the tender moments of calves and colts nursing. Contrastingly, dramatic predator-prey scenes play out with cats capturing a stag and griffins confronting horses. Toward the neck, miniature goats, rabbits, dogs, grasshoppers, and birds add a touch of whimsy. These artifacts become windows into Scythian fashion, beliefs, interests, and daily life, offering dramatic snapshots of a civilization that reverberate through time. Themes of recumbent cats and reclining stags echo throughout, displaying the Scythians' nuanced artistic tastes. A fascinating aspect is their oscillation between realistic portrayals and abstract stylizations, a precursor to modern artistic preferences. The Black Sea discoveries not only underscore the practical choices of clothing for a cold climate, but also reveal the Scythians' love for music and dance. 
erotic dancers captured in mid-action sway to the rhythms of music. A golden headband from the Saknavka Kurgan showcases a lyre playing man, while panpipes crafted from bird bones at Sketavka hint at the musical intricacies that enrich their lives. The unearthed oxhorn drums at Pazirik and the harp-like instrument at Kurgan II in Sketavka bear testament to the Scythians' musical prowess, creating melodies that echo through their nomadic existence. In contrast, as the Parthians embraced the Seleucid Empire, they steered away from Scythia's artistic styles, drawing inspiration from Greek motifs. The trouser and tunic outfit, exclusive to nobles, experienced a resurgence with exaggerated distinctions. Loose-fitted clothing adorned with multiple horizontal pleats became a symbol of nobility for both men and women. Men's pleated trousers, ballooning around the legs, further emphasized their fashion statement. The statuary of the Parthians depicted puffed hair held in place with headbands, closely cropped beards, mustaches, and intricate leaf and floral embroidery with vertical rows of brass or precious metal buttons and coins. However, a distinctive feature of Scythian art remains the plethora of animal depictions, in contrast to the Greeks' emphasis on the human subject. The Parthians, while attempting a similar emphasis with innovative frontality motifs, fell short in technical expertise for realistic depiction, and the Scythians, deeply connected to the elements that surrounded them, held a profound belief system rooted in the earth, sky, sun, and fire. The expansive horizon where the sky met the earth and the ever-present sun casting its glow were daily reminders of the divine. Fire, a source of security against the wild beasts of the night and a practical tool in their daily lives, also held symbolic significance. These elemental forces formed the cornerstone of Scythian theology. In the sacred tapestry woven by Herodotus, eight deities were revered by the Scythians, their names echoing through the ages in Greek guise. Hestia and Zeus became Tabitha and Papias, while other divine figures included Api, Mother Earth, Gitosiris, Apollo, and Argimpasa, Aphrodite. Among the unnamed deities stood Hercules, Ares, and Poseidon, each with their own place in the celestial hierarchy. The Scythians, however, did not depict their deities in human form, and their worship was devoid of images, altars, or temples, a unique characteristic in the ancient world. For the Parthians, their religious journey initially mirrored that of the Scythians, a reverent homage to the earth, sky, sun, and fire. Yet, as the Parthians carved their destiny in the annals of history, they encountered two predominant belief systems, Zoroastrianism from the Persian Empire and the worship of Mithra, a god figure embodying the attributes of many deities. The symbiosis of Persian and Greek influences during Parthia's early days allowed them to flirt with dual customs. However, as they asserted their independence, the Parthians gravitated towards Mithra, a choice that not only distinguished them from Greeks and Persians, but also rekindled a connection to their Scythian roots. Mithra, a warrior on horseback, mirrored the martial ethos that resonated deeply with both Scythian and Parthian traditions. In the mosaic of cultures and influences, the Parthians and Scythians danced to the same melodies, sharing music and dance in the vast expanse of their territories. The Scythian dress, taken to exaggerated heights of fashion by the Parthians, showcased their distinct sense of style. While their attempt at Greek art fell short of Scythia's vibrant gold craftsmanship, the Parthians, as builders of urban empires, displayed architectural creativity on a grand scale. Circular motifs, geometric decorations, and the innovative design of Iwans marked their urban landscapes. Governance diverged as the Scythians adhered to tribal ways, while the Parthians forged a unique king-noble relationship. Yet, in the theater of war, they found common ground. The Parthians, inspired by the lessons learned from their Scythian cousins, honed their cavalry and weapons to conquer and maintain an empire that endured for nearly five centuries. Thus, the legacy of the Scythians, woven into the cultural fabric of the Parthians, stood as a testament to the enduring influence of ancient connections, where elements, beliefs, and the artistry of a nomadic people shaped the course of history.